Let's get ready to brew up some Halloween magic. In this video, we're creating an exploding busted canvas featuring a witch flying across the moon. Imagine the moonlit sky bursting open, revealing a silhouette of a witch soaring through the night. Perfect for adding a wickedly enchanting vibe to your Halloween decor. With just a few simple cuts, we'll transform an ordinary canvas into a spellbinding 3D masterpiece. Let's cast a crafty spell and bring this bewitching scene to life. Hey everyone, it's Lean from ColoradoLean.com. Welcome back to the craft room. Well, I don't know about you, but my YouTube feed has been inundated with this exploding busted canvas trend. And that is one thing I absolutely had to try. So I have a number of supplies here on the desk and we're gonna start with an eight by 10 canvas that I picked up from Walmart. This is a two pack. So I have plans for the second one already. As I said in my intro, I will be working with a witch flying across the moon. The witch die cut is partially mine and partially someone else's. Um, I did design the broom SVG last year and I used it on a t-shirt for Halloween. Um, I will definitely put a link for the witch down in the comments. Um, I picked her up at Creative Fabrica. And then I just have a circle that I cut out of white cardstock for my moon. I will be painting the canvas with some black acrylic ink. I'm sorry, with some black acrylic paint. And then I will also be using some Lost Shadow Distress paint to add a little bit of texture to the moon. All of the paper will be glued down with matte Mod Podge. And I picked up this adorable little bottle at the Dollar Tree. I have a finger blade. I have a foam paintbrush. I will be attaching the scrap of paper to my cinch book board, which I'm going to use for the back of the canvas, uh, rather than using an actual canvas board. I couldn't pick that up here in town, so I'm just going to use what I have. I will be adding a little bit of this silver distress crayon. I have an idea for some tissue paper. And then the scrap of paper that we're going to use, I got this from a family member who was de-stashing. Um, unfortunately, there is no information on it, so I don't know where or when she picked this up, but I think it'll be really pretty for this project. And then I'm also going to be adding some LED lights to the inside of my frame. Um, I picked up this set from Michael's. So let's go ahead and get started, shall we? All right, so the first thing I wanna do is I wanna work on the back of the canvas. And I need to measure this opening so I know how big to cut my paper. So it looks like we need a piece that is about six inches wide. by about eight inches tall. So my finished project will be horizontal. Um, I don't think it matters all that much the direction of the stripes because they will be coming out. So let's just go ahead and cut it like it is right now. So I'm using my Tim Holtz and Tonic Studio rotary paper trimmer. And let's cut this at six inches wide. And then I need to cut this at eight inches long. Now let's do a dry fit and see how well that works. And I think that's going to be just fine. We won't be pulling it 
all the way out so that will work just fine all right let's go ahead and get some of this mod podge on here i'm just going to dump some out and then spread it around now i haven't worked with mod podge in years all right so i have a good layer down so let's go ahead and set our paper in and we want the pattern to be facing up so we want it to be facing the back of the frame so we'll wrap that down and then I will put a layer of Mod Podge over the top. Okay, so this is wrinkling up a lot. Um, and I don't like it. So, so I'm going to try something else. I will put this aside. Okay, so I have the other canvas. And one of the other techniques that I have seen when they've done this, um, especially when they use scrap of paper, they put the Mod Podge down on the back of the canvas and they let it completely dry. And then they put the scrap of paper down and then iron it with something. And that usually, well, in, in the videos I've seen, that prevents wrinkles like that. So let's give that a try. All right, I have a liberal amount of Mod Podge put on there and I'm going to be using that again after the front is dried. So I am going to wrap up my foam brush with some press and seal and set that off to the side. Now I'm going to bring in my black acrylic paint. Um, this is Apple Barrel. And I'm going to paint the front and the sides of this canvas. And I'm going to try not to get it all over myself. And again, I will go ahead and speed through this for you. Okay, time to clean up. And I'm going to let this dry. So we'll be back in a little bit. All right, so we are back and my canvas is all dry. Um, I did put an extra coat of uh, matte Mod Podge on the back. Um, and now I'm going to take another piece of my scrap of paper. Now I do have this on a piece of parchment paper. I have my mini Cricut heat press on medium. And I'm going to take another piece of parchment paper and we're just going to see how this goes. I'm really not sure how this works, but they say it should. So, so I am going to go ahead and move on. And now let's work on the top some more. So my idea with this is to put the tissue paper over the top. Of course, I want to crinkle it up quite a bit and get some texture on this. Okay, and then that will wrap around the side. So I'll cut some of this off. All right, I have my brush. And this time I will put the Mod Podge out on my little palette here. And let's just start painting this on. Okay, and then we'll just lay that on there and keep going all right so it is the next day 
I did let this canvas dry overnight and before I went to bed last night I put a coat of the uh, apple barrel acrylic black paint over the top of it and I did do the sides so I want to add a little bit something else to the top of this canvas and I'm going to use a Tim Holtz Distress Crayon. My initial thought had been to use silver, but I think I'm going to use the antique bronze instead. So these crayons, this is the first time I've actually used one. And I'm just going to lightly go over a section and then I will buff it out with my finger. And not only will that give us the texture of the wrinkles, but it's also picking up a little bit of texture of the canvas. I think you can see that. Um, and I kind of like that. So I'm going to go ahead and do this and I will get back to you when I'm done. Okay, and there is our finished canvas. Oh, I really like how that turned out. Um, this is a metallic antique bronze. Um, actually, this three-pack is all metallic colors. And I think, personally, I think I made a good choice with this bronze color. Um, I did go a little bit heavier just around the edges. Um, I think that's going to add a nice touch. Uh, so I'm just going to set that aside to dry and to finish curing. And I just cleaned up my finger with the baby wipe. Okay, so now what we're going to do is I want to paint my moon. Um, I'm not going to do anything crazy or elaborate. And I have Lost Shadow Distress Paint from Tim Holtz and Ranger. And I'm just going to put out just uh, two drops, maybe. I'll get out more if I need it. And my paintbrush will be part of a paper towel. So I'm just going to make a little pouncer like that. And I'm going to get some paint on there. And then I'm just going to make some clouds across the moon. So just something that simple. Might add a little bit more right there. But yeah, there is our painted moon. So now I'm going to go ahead and set this aside to dry. And I'm going to put my witch over there so I know where she is as well. So now let's go ahead and talk about the backboard. Um, in the majority of videos that I've seen for the busted exploding canvas, um, they used a canvas board. Um, I live in Northeast Colorado, 50 miles from everywhere. So I wasn't able to pick one of those up to fit my canvas. So instead I am just using a designer book board from We're Memory Keepers. It is specifically for the cinch machine, um, but I have used that when I was making um, a few mini albums. And I have some extras, so I'm going to use that. So I've cut this down to a little bit smaller than eight by 10. Um, I really don't want to see this behind my canvas. Um, so, but I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna jump off here real fast and I'm gonna get a black Sharpie marker and I am just going to edge my, my uh, board. So I'll be right back. Okay, so my edges are colored. Not perfect, but you know, that's okay. 
Um, I decided early on that I was going to use some score tape to attach my scrap of paper. Um, like I mentioned before, I haven't used um, haven't used Mod Podge in a long time. So, and if you'll recall, uh, <laughs> I didn't do a great job using it. So, score tape I know I can use. So, I'm just going to put some of this on here. Okay. Um, I did want to tell you that I used my Tim Holtz in Tonic Studios rotary trimmer to cut this board and it cut like a dream it was perfect so here is the paper i'll be putting on here and what i'm going to do and i do this a lot i'm just going to take that piece of tape off and I'm going to line up my paper here on the table. And then I'm going to go back in and I will remove the rest of my paper backing and set this down. Now there may be some crafters who can take all of this tape off and have it line up perfectly, but I think we all know that's not this crafter. Okay. So there we go. That's all there is to that. All right, we are about ready to cut our canvas, but before I do that, I want to attach my which to the moon and that is how that turned out so just a little bit of texture i think will be nice um i'm going to pop, pop her up on some thin 3d foam squares um, i have a package of black ones all right now comes the part i've been concerned about worried about. Um, I don't know if the uh, crayon is completely dry yet, so I want to protect my cutting mat. So Now, I know there are different ways that you can cut these. Um, the way I'm going to do it, I'm going to make a cross cut and then I will do some point cuts. And uh, let's... Okay, I, I'm a little nervous here. So let's just make the cut. <laughs> okay, let's just do it. We're just going to do it. It's about in the middle right there. So I am trying to cut through canvas, scrapbook paper, as well as tissue paper. Oh, and it looks like that cut just fine. Okay, now I will make my cross cut. So I guess it's about the middle-ish. Okay. And yeah, let's let's try this. So here is one of my cuts right here. So I'm going to try and do a diagonal cut. Okay, and I will try that on this corner as well. All right, let's put this away. 
Oh, and these finger blades, this works so well for me. Um, I'm glad I bought this. Every time I try and use a traditional exacto uh, knife, it's just horrible, horrible situation. Okay, so I have my cuts. And I'm definitely going to have to take a pair of scissors and trim up farther. I already know that. I think I'm going to get my little cutter bee scissors and do that. Maybe I'll do it from this side. Okay. Don't like what I'm hearing. Can't tell if the paper is. Oh, shoot. Yep. Okay, well, crud. Okay, um, this is not good. My paper is totally coming up. It looks like. We need to get some more Mod Podge on there. Well, this project is not exactly turning out like I had initially hoped. Yeah, this isn't turning out at all how I thought it would. I'm actually kind of disappointed in this because everything was going so well for so long until it wasn't. Okay, so I am going to re-glue all this stuff back down and um, I will be back with you later and see if we can salvage this project. Well, you guys, we are back for day three of trying to do an exploding busted canvas project. Um, yeah, I attempted to glue my scrap of paper to the back of the canvas yesterday. And after a while, I, I had to walk away. When I came back, I just ripped it all out. And then I grabbed every single tube of acrylic paint that I had. And I finally settled on a mix of Liquitex Basic. Um, I use gold and cadmium yellow deep hue. And I painted it on the back of my canvas. So let me hold this up here. You may be able to see where the, where it's just canvas. And you might also be able to see like right here and here where this is actually the back of the scrap of paper that for some reason decided to actually glue down to the canvas. Um, you know, I figured what the heck it's Halloween. The front side is really textured. So why not a little bit extra texture on the back? And you also may notice that I ended up with paint on the front of the canvas totally not worried about that because these pieces will be curled back and you shouldn't see them too much and if you do whatever i don't care at this point <laughs> again it will just add to the rusticness of the project so where do we go from here <laughs> i think what we're going to do now is we are going to glue in our fairy lights so I'm going to go ahead and get my hot glue gun turned on and warming up. I will try and unwind that mess and I'll be back with you shortly. Okay, so as with a lot of things in this project, I have not worked with fairy lights before. So I'm not exactly sure the best way to do this, but I'm going to start just by plastering that down to the canvas right there. 
Um, I am working with a Gorilla glue gun temperature. It is a dual temp. Um, I have it on low right now. Um, I'll go ahead and turn that up to high when I start working uh, with the actual canvas. Um, so I think I just want to put some dots of glue and then and then put the wire in that, I think. Um, I know I don't want to cover the little LED bulbs with glue. And I also know that this string of lights is going to drive me absolutely insane before this is over. So I am going to work my way around this frame. Um, I won't make you watch because there may be a bad word or two floating around out there. Um, so I will definitely get back to you when I'm done. All right. Well, that took a little bit of time to do. Um, these lights, which again I picked up from Michaels, are 9.8 feet long. And they went around an 8x10 canvas four times. Um, I don't have batteries yet, so I just plugged the little tester back in. And I think that's going to be so pretty. Okay, so let me get that out of the way for now. Um, I think I'm going to go ahead and put my board on. And then I will wait to put the witch and the moon in um, after I get the front of the canvas turned back. That way I'll know exactly where I need to place it. Uh, so I am, let's see, I turned my glue gun up too high and I'm just going to run some glue around the edge. Um, if I were going to sell one of these, I would definitely include um, staples. Let's get this on here before all that glue hardens and dries. So yeah, because this is just for me, you know, if I need to re-glue this at some time, that'll be fine. But if I were to make one of these to sell at a craft fair or to gift to family or friends, then I would definitely include staples in here to make sure this is completely secure. All right, so now it's time to work on the busted part of our busted canvas. Um, so what we're going to do here is we're just going to bend these back. Um, I'm going to work on the bottom first because I want to make sure that these don't go over the edge so that I can stand my canvas up on its side. So I'm going to add some hot glue to that. And then I'm going to hold it down with my tweezers because that's a little warm. And then this is also where I can decide if I need to make any additional cuts. And I think I want to cut this up just a little bit. Okay. So we'll put that one there. slide that out to the end of the canvas but not hanging over now these up here at the top I can definitely do something different with those okay so I'm just going to go ahead and speed through this part and I will get back with you when I'm done okay my busted canvas is all busted out and I think that looks really pretty um 
I wasn't sure how this color was going to work with the orange and with the uh, antique bronze that I had. Um, but I think it just adds that little bit of extra shine. Um, so now all I need to do is put in witchy poo. And the question is, do I lay her flat or do I put her up on some foam dots? And I think, I think I might actually put her up on some dots. Well, foam squares. Um, I have some white ones here that I will get out. And then one in the middle. Ugh, let it be. Picking glue, glue webs off here for a while. And then as always, I'm going to add a little bit of glue, wet glue, just to give me a chance to move things around before things become completely permanent. Okay, now I'm sorry for my head, but I want to make sure that she is kind of flying up at an angle and is mostly centered. So just like that. And you know what? <laughs> Three times a charm, there is our finished busted canvas. Honestly, didn't think this day would come. Well, here we are. After three days, my exploding busted canvas is finally finished. I think this turned out so pretty. Um, I did notice when I stood this up to look at it earlier that you can see the, uh, the lights down here at the bottom. But, you know, I'm not worried about that at all. Anyway, thank you so much for joining me today, for sticking it through to the very end. I really appreciate that. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, and don't forget to hit that notification bell so you know when I put up the next video. Until then, have a great day, you guys. Bye.